I can give you some tidbits. I don't know if I have a full story. Mm -hmm. uh, are we recording? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I didn't worry about it. It's like, we're going to, it's like, you know, cut it after. Yeah, it's <laughs> uh, you know, It's really quite interesting. Uh, this journey with uh, Lee uh, redoing this theater started uh, several years ago. And early on, um, we uh, put an auction, held an auction to auction off a lot of the existing furniture and furnishings. And one thing that was uh, remarkable, I thought, during that process, we had an open house and we had over 2,000 people come mm -hmm. through, way more than we expected. There were four of us here, and we got brick barnstormed, you know, with people. Mm -hmm. So we ended up giving tours throughout, because most people just wanted to see it, because it's been shut up for 12, 14 years at that point. And the number of past employees that came, that used to work here as 16 year olds and now retired, you know, they're in their oh. 60s and 70s. They mm -hmm. work, this is their first job working concessions, mm -hmm. and, you know, as a, as a, um, I forgot the, whatever, the, what else they work, but um, it was quite a few stories. It was such mm -hmm. the, back then, it was the movie theaters were such a social event. Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of times we go in, we'll watch a movie, we leave. So that, back then it seemed like it was such a social event and so many friends and family gathered around these neighborhood establishments. It was pretty exciting to hear about that. Um, and, and the different stories, which some of you mentioned. But, um, then uh, another thing that we discovered during, during the construction process, which took about 11 months, is there's a column in the back theater which was the backstage originally, now it's this, this uh, small theater, the backstage, is uh, all the workmen signed their name on this one column. And I, we saw them back as far as 1932 or something like that, where these guys, you know, wow. Joe Schmoll, 1932, would sign their name. And, uh, it, up and down this entire column, some of it goes 60 feet out. Oh. So it was pretty interesting. So that's one of the things we carried on with. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we did it. We had all the guys working in the sign the uh, sign the column, you know, because that's what they did back then too. So it's kind of right. And so with the concept of, as you were saying, with the ambiance of back then, with the way that you transformed it, have you kind of recreated more of that movie experience? Would you say we tried to we tried to bring the glamour back into the movie theaters, um, and I think. Um, we had a good tapestry to work with here, the way it was designed and how we retained the majority of all of its splendor from the 20s. And this is the movie house. This is, you know, originally built actually as a vaudeville theater with the orchestra pit, live act. Um, and we tried to keep the glamour of that intact uh, as the Avalon. We called it very Avalon-esque, and we wanted to keep that. And to kind of heighten the experience for our guests when they when they do come, you can go to the chain um, outfits, and you know they're big boxes. It's like a Target or a Walmart. They're not as interesting, in my opinion. And I've been to all of them. And we try to create an environment here where it's more of a it's a destination as much as it is a movie. And in the way that I feel that we've heightened the experiences. We brought a lot more of the contemporary attributes into it, the, the amenities such as a lounge where we can sit down and talk, um, expanded concessions beyond popcorn. We have a full kitchen that serves food and we deliver right to your chair. So we're, we're, we're trying to take that more personalized, higher level of service into the movie theater and, and create that sense of uh, a destination. It's not just where you go to a movie. You can go here for dinner, you can go here for drinks, and a movie, you know, all of it. So we try to bring that whole thing together and create that social environment. And how do you think that new social environment has transformed uh, human behavior towards uh, movie theaters today? I mean, modern people, you know, and the way that they interact. I think this experience is uh, absolutely required that we that we're creating here, that social environment here because it's so easy to sit at home on your chair and watch whatever you can get from cable or Netflix or Hulu or whatever, red box at the grocery store mm -hmm. on the way home and skip the whole idea of going out. Going out is more expensive, there's no doubt about that. We won't argue that, but 
it is a whole different type of experience. And I think people are, a lot of people in our demographics are a lot more sophisticated and they enjoy um, the environment that we mm -hmm. deliver. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. But it is difficult to compete against those, you know, guys because it is easy to stay home. We've all done it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So. I think that's kind of all we need. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank no you. Again.